Okay, so we have two types of components in Next.js, server component and client component. And in this video, we'll be primarily focusing on three things. Where your code runs if you're using client or server component. When should you use server component or client component? And how do you use server or client components? Starting from where your code runs if you're using client or server component. So for server component, this is pretty simple. The code execution and rendering happens almost always on the server side. And similarly, you would think in case of client component, this happens on the client side, which is actually true, but it's not entirely true. See, the thing with Next.js is that it tries to optimize your app as much as it can. And one of the things it does to improve the performance of your Next.js application is that it renders client component also in the server, at least for the initial load of the page. So what really happens is that on the server side, React creates a special package called a React Server Component Payload. And this includes both the server rendered content and references to client components. Next.js uses this payload along with the JavaScript instruction to generate an HTML page on the server. This page then gets sent to the client to show a fast non-interactive preview of the page. And then with the process of reconciliation and hydration, the page becomes interactive and usable. Now at this point, you may think that if the initial rendering for client components is also happening on the server side, then why are we calling these client components? The thing is that server component and client components are more about where your code runs and what capabilities they have. So let's talk about these capabilities and also discuss in which scenario it makes sense to use client component and when it makes sense to use server components. So we have this a very nice table present in the Next.js documentation that tells you if you have these kind of cases, which component makes sense for your use case. And obviously this is Next.js recommendation. For example, in the first thing that you can see, we are talking about fetching data. What Next.js recommends is if you are fetching data, do that in the server component. It's not like you cannot fetch data in client component. It's just that Next.js recommends you to fetch data on your server components. And for all of, the, all of the interactivity thing, you can use client components. So that means if you want to fetch data, if you want to access backend resources directly, if you want to keep sensitive information on the server, and if you want to keep large dependencies on the server or reduce the client side JavaScript, in all of these cases, it makes sense to use server component, right? But for all of the other scenarios, for example, if you want to add interactivity and event listeners to your page by using things like on click on change or if you want to use state or lifecycle effects methods like use state user reducer use effect things like that for all of these things you are going to have to use a client component now let's see how do you use server or client components the first important thing to understand here is that whenever you create a new component it is always going to be a server component so as you can see, this is a home page component and this is a server component, right? So one of the things Next.js recommends is that if you want to fetch data, you can do that in the server component. For example, I have this function where I'm just making a request to this endpoint and then returning back the response that we get. And then in this home function, I am first basically awaiting the response that I'm waiting for this uh, data. And then after that, I can render data over here as you can see over here, right? And we can see that in the browser. So these are all of the to-dos that we got from that endpoint. So let's convert this server component to a client component to see what are the differences. So the first thing you have to do is at the top of your file, you'll have to use this directory called use client. And the first thing you would notice is that my code editor is giving me this warning that you are trying to make a client component async, which is absolutely not recommended. So I have to remove this async from here. But if I have removed async from here, I cannot use this await. And if I cannot use await, that means I cannot reliably get this data over here. So that means in order to make all of this work in case of client component, what I'll have to do is I'll have to import use state and use effect. And then I'll have to create some state variables. And then inside of this use effect, I'm going to get the data and then update the data that we have over here. And then we use this data to render a list over here. And we can see this is working as expected. Let's refactor our code a bit. 
I will move this get data function to a separate file. Since this get data is now a utility function, you could use this directly inside of your server component or client component to, to basically get the data. Let's now let's imagine this scenario that in order to get data from this endpoint, you also need to use this super secret API key. Now this is fine in case of server component. I mean, you can simply import this file in case of server component. And since that code is going to be executed on the server side, you do not have to worry about using these using these sensitive keys over there. But in case of client component, when you're using it like this, and since you have basically imported this inside of a client bundle, that means there is this possibility of leaking that API information to the client, to the browser, which you do not want. So to prevent this scenario, you can install a package called server only. And then at the top of the file, you can simply import server only. So with this, what is going to happen is since you have marked this file, a server only file, when you try to make a build for your next JS application, and since we are using this get data inside of a client component, this is going to give us this error that you are trying to import a component that needs server only. And this only works in server components. So this will basically prevent you from leaking your sensitive information. One of the important thing that you should know is that anything that you import inside of a client component will become part of the client bundle. And what this means is that let's say you have some sort of server component. If you try to import the server component inside of a client component, as you can see over here, the server component will also become part of the client component. If you really think about it, this is not what you want. I mean, the reason you have created the server component so that you can get the benefit of all of the server side rendering stuff and some of the important things that you want to keep happening on the server. Importing a server component like this will make it part of the client bundle. So this is not what you want. But there is a still a way through which you can import a server component inside of a client component. You can do that by passing server component as children of the client component. So here, so have a look at this example. Here what is happening is this client component is accepting the children and then this children is being rendered over here. So in the parent component, this is how we can use this. We are first basically getting the client component and then we are passing this server component as a child of this client component. So when you do something like this, server component will not become part of the client bundle. And both of these components will be independent of each other. All right, that's all for this video. If you found this video valuable or helpful in any way, do like and subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you in the next one.